This is the Brynlight HC01 Noctua headlamp. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Brynlight for reaching out to me and offering to send the HC01 headlamp so that I could share it with you. Now, before I accepted it, I did look at this light and look at all the specifications and its key features, and I really liked what I saw, and that is the reason I accept it. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the light in some detail, sharing the key features for it as well as its specifications, and then, of course, we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. Just before we focus Focus in on the light itself. Let me share with you what it came with. So this is the box that the light arrived in. Inside of the box there was a operating manual with warranty information, a USB type C charging cable and installed in the light itself is a 1200 milliamp lithium ion battery. I will be taking that out to show you because that in fact is one of the other key features about this light that drew me to it. The other features are this. First off, there are three LEDs on this light. You can see them on the front. There is a primary which gives you your furthest cast and greatest amount of light. It's operated by its own button up here on top of the light. And then right down here are two more LEDs, red and white flood, and they are operated by this button on this side. And both of those LEDs have two levels of illumination, the two for the red and two for the white. Another key feature for this light and difference, something I have not seen on any other light, is the head strap itself. So the head strap winds up with this little turnbuckle here. It keeps it nice and compact for storage, but it allows for easy adjustment around your head. So you would start by pulling it out to what you think is the closest adjustment size for your head, put it on your head, then you can reach over and turn this little turnbuckle and that will start to pull the head strap in and it's got some nice detents and kind of locks in. I do like the fact that it kind of snugs right up against the light so you don't have a strap dangling all over the place when you throw it in your pack. And the last key feature worth mentioning is the fact that this has a two year repair warranty but it's in fact three years if you register the light with the company. So all right, let's get into the physical specifications for this light. Now all of this information of course will be in the video description below. Wait. 2.9 ounces, 65 grams, and that's accomplished primarily by the fact that it's a high impact plastic case around the outside, but that in no way means that this is an inexpensive or cheap light. It's actually a very high quality light, as you'll see as we get into it. Length, overall length is 2.37 or 60.3 millimeters. The width is 1.66 inches or 42.3 millimeters and the height 1.2 inches or 28.7 millimeters. All right, just before I go through the operation of the Bryanite HC01, I brought the camera in a little closer so I can give you a bit more detail and show you the inside of the battery compartment. One of the features that is really nice about this light is the fact that there is an infinite amount of adjustment. Tilt in the light forward, as you can see, clicks in nicely. Actually, you can go all the way around if you wanted to. Actually, I'll stop here while the back is out facing you so that I can show you the battery compartment. So it locks up quite nicely with a nice little lever right there. Open the lever up, and then you can open the battery compartment up. So inside, you can see this 1200 milliliter lithium ion battery, rechargeable, of course. But also, if you want to, you can sub that battery out for three triple A's. And to me, that's one of the best selling points for this light because I know a number of people want to be able to have the option of backing up any battery they may have in the light with triple A's if that's what it takes. And this one can do it for you. So I think that's a great feature all by itself. Let me see if I can put this back in correctly. There we go. It does have the positive and negative anodes on there to help you with that. Close the case up, snap it shut, and we're good to operate. Now, the USB Type-C charging port is on the bottom of the light and has a little rubber cover on it, as well as I mentioned a minute ago, the two buttons on top of the light. Now, I just want to share this with you because it is something I found uh, it wasn't advertised in any of the literature, but I discovered in my testing, and I think it's a great feature in and of itself, and that is this light will operate 
fully with all its lumen settings while it is plugged in and charging, which means if you are out for an extended period of time in the woods, maybe even search and rescue work, you can carry with you a, a power bank powered by a USB power bank, carry that in your pocket and then plug a cable in directly to the light and that'll give you the longest battery life, of course, that you can. Only thing is, if it's stand up in the standard mode on the strap, then um, that's going to come out and dangle down in front of your face. So what I found is, is that you can turn the light upside down and then still operate it. Now the, the battery cable is going to come out and you can have this go up over your shoulder or down into your shirt pocket, jacket pocket, whatever it is you're wearing. And you can do that without actually changing how the turnbuckle works because you can just remove it from the frame and then put it back in upside down if you want to. In fact, I find this my preferred way to have it mounted on the frame because what this does now is that actually puts the turnbuckle at the bottom. No big deal, I know, but if you have, and I don't have longer hair, but if you have longer hair, having that turnbuckle at the top, I found that even with the, my hair as short as it is, occasionally it would get wrapped up in the turnbuckle. But when it's upside down on my head, it's easier for me to reach, believe it or not, and also means that I'm less likely to tangle my hair up in it. Now, again, that's not a huge risk, it's just something I wanna point out. And if it happens to you, it's nice to know you can just turn the light upside down and still have it operate. All right, let's run through the operation of the HC01. So very intuitive. If you want to operate the primary light, the button is right on top of it. Quick press will turn the light on. I have it set for low right now. If I want to change the lumen settings, press and hold. It'll run through low, medium, high, and turbo. Me in turbo and then back down to low again. If I turn the light off and turn it back on, it has a memory for the last lumen setting. Now I can get direct access to turbo with a double press. I can get direct access to strobe with a triple press. And while in strobe, if I hit it again three times, so another triple press, I'll get direct access to SOS. All right, now as far as the, let's turn that light off. As far as the auxiliary two lights, the red and the white to start with, the button on the left, over here, my left, your right, right now. Uh, that operates those two, so let's turn it on. And as you can see, I have the red light turned on, and if I press and hold, it'll cycle low and high. And it also has memory for the last lumen setting. If I want to get to the red signal light, then I would triple press the button. And now we'll turn that off, turn it back on. Again, the last lumen setting. Now, if I want to get over to the white floodlight, the auxiliary light, it's a double press while it's on red light. There we go, that's better. So you can see when we have the white light on, and if I press that and hold, it just cycles back through low and high. And as I mentioned, if you really want to have a whole lot of light coming out of this light, you can turn on the primary light and bring it up to its and that's a lot of light. You can see how the camera is reacting to it. All right, let's turn both of those off. All right, and the last thing I'll mention is that this light does have an electronic lockout, which is a great feature if you're throwing this in your backpack or maybe in your pocket and you don't want to unintentionally turn the light on. You can lock the light out by pressing on both buttons simultaneously until the light flashes and then you're locked out. You can unlock it by doing exactly the same thing. Press down on both buttons button simultaneously until it flashes and then you're ready to operate again. All right, we're doing some nighttime testing here. The Brenite HC01 headlamp and I do have it on low and if I aim it down just in front of the camera, it's not too bad at all, but it's not really gonna cast any distance. Let me take it up a level. All right, so that is medium. That actually is doing quite a bit of light for the lumen setting that it is. It's lighting up most of my backyard and the neighbor's home there, as you can see. Let's take it up to high. High is impressive. This is likely about as high as I would take it most of the time. It would extend battery light out, give me all the light. I've got a good amount of light here in the backyard, as you can see. Bit of a central hot spot, but most of it is flood. Now one more level up. And that's turbo. And turbo, again, very impressive, but I think I would keep it on high most of the time, medium or high, to extend the battery light, and it's more than enough light for use with a headlamp. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Bryanite HC01 Noctua.
I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the features I like most about this light to start with is the intuitive operating system, the primary light being operated by a button right over top of it, and the secondary or auxiliary lights, including the red and white, being operated by a button directly over top of those. And the fact that they are separate from each other and you can operate either of them independently, I think makes this just a very versatile light in that sense. The uh, high light on the primary, the turbo light, it casts out a good long way, but as you saw, it has a good hot spot with an amount of flood on either side. So I think that gives you quite a bit of option. Now, honestly, running it on turbo is not going to give you a long run time, so likely you'll be running it on, at least for me, running it on either medium or high most of the time. I think that'll give you most of the light you need for negotiating through the woods at night, certainly for doing any chores around a campsite. Now, as far as being inside of a tent, it's nice to to have that red light in both the high and low as well as the low floodlight. That's the best way I'll describe it. I like it that it is not as intense as the primary light. Gives you nothing but flood. I know it didn't show up very well outside but again you get two levels of illumination. It's a great light for using inside of the tent. Maybe for reading or looking at uh, a device you have like your cell phone or something like that. So I think having those two lights separate from the primary light, great great feature indeed. Another one which you know, I wasn't quite so sure of when I first got it, but I've come to appreciate it, is the fact that you can wrap the head strap up with this turnbuckle, keep it nice and compact to the light. So really, it doesn't even need a little stuff sack or anything. I'll drop this right into my pack as is or into my pocket as is. I did mention how easy it is to adjust it to bring it back snug around your head. One thing I haven't mentioned so far is it's a good size strap. This strap will wrap right around my head easily, and I actually wore it on top of a toque or beanie, whatever you want to call it, and still had some slack left over. So I like the fact that this has a good long amount of adjustment in the strap itself. Being able to take it off of the frame, uh, oh yeah, there are some pluses there, but maybe not a deal breaker or something that you'll buy it for just for that reason. But it does allow you to turn the light upside down in its mounting frame easily enough so that if you wanted to plug this light into a power bank and not have it the wire dangled in front of your eyes, then I think then that uh, makes this a great option as well. And certainly right at the very top of all of the features for this light is the ability to remove the lithium ion battery and replace it with triple A's if that's what you want to do. Okay, overall, great features for this light and actually actually a very reasonable price. But if you want to see more about this light, I'll give you the links to it in the video description where you can take another look at it. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.